Happy Bowtie Friday. I'm Austin Griffith. I'm here with the Build Guild. We're building guilds. Here comes Solid Oracle. We got so many to show off. We're going right into it. Here goes Solid Oracle right now. Take the floors. Take the stage. You got it. Thanks. Right, Thanks, Austin. Yeah, I wanted to share. Um, can you see my screen? Yep, we got it. Uh, so, yeah, together with, uh, uh, with Elliot, another teammate of mine, uh, we built a Solid Vault on Scaffolding 2. Uh, I'll go deeper in the contracts, but uh, let me give you an overview. Um, having a look at the front end, basically it's a, a tokenized vault, uh, ERC-4626 on live on Gorley that uh, deposits yield, uh, deposits uh, wrapped teeth on Aave and earns um, yield. I um, did it on Gorley because I wanted to um, basically have uh, learn how to use these protocols on, on, on testnet and really stretch them and test them out. And also um, doing um, testing with mainnet forks and, and all of that. So maybe uh, it's worth going into the into the exact uh, solidity, if it's okay. Yeah, what's the API for 4626? It looks like there's a deposit and a mint. I don't I don't know exactly the, like the, the TLDR of the API of that vault. You inherit, uh, I inherit directly the, um, the 4626 of Soulmate that has yeah deposit uh, uh, withdraw um, and all the logic is is dealt with inside that library the only things that you need to or you can override are before or after deposit so in this case once you deposit the wrap teeth uh, you know what do you want it to do right and that's the after deposit function and then another thing that is fundamental is the before withdraw, right? Because uh, before withdrawing, you're going to get your money out of Aave. Otherwise, things don't work. So I guess those are the things. Another important thing, another important function is the total asset function. Because that's basically um, uh, keeping track of your actual assets. And based on how you compute that, you'll have to manually harvest the yield. So I've been learning more on this because I'm also doing a, a levered a levered version of this vault and concluding it now. So I might be able to present it in a couple of weeks. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let me let me get the, the solid vault repo. But I can share off a bit. Should be good. And you can see it? No. Uh, we're looking at the repo right now, the Scaffold ETH2 Solid Vault GitHub. Okay, now do you see yep, the now Solid I see code. Vault? Yep, yep, read me. Okay. So um, it's typical uh, packages. We have a hard hard Next.js as a scaffold these two and let's go in the contracts the solid vault uh, ritually inherits the erc4626 from the soulmate mixins and again i did this decision because i wanted to use existing composable libraries i didn't want to reinvent the wheel here but rather focus on uh, understanding the DeFi, understanding, you know, what can be done with a tokenized vault. Because I see a lot of implementations that don't use this and, and it's a shame. Um, so again, uh, so the, the library, literally you can read about it. Uh, even there's a good blog post about it, but I think the most, the most important part, let me just move this. Is, is the solid vault. So what did I do um, on top of it? I defined some, some global variables. Uh, I initialized the year 646, similar to, a, well, it is an ERC20 uh, tokenized vault. 
and then I set the Ave uh, addresses. As, as I mentioned earlier, the inherited uh, overridden functions are going to be after deposit. And, uh, um, and you see in the after deposit here, what we do is we supply assets uh, or there are assets uh, to the Ave lending pool. And then we track the total holdings are increased by the assets. And then the before withdrawal, we'll retrieve the underlying. And in the retrieve underlying, we pull from strategy. And, we pull from, and when we pull from strategy, we withdraw from Ave. So these are the main um, things that are need to be overridden in order to use the ERC46 to six efficiently without having to rewrite the entire thing. This is all you need basically uh, to use a tokenized vault. Um, then the vault accounting is important. Total assets, as I said, needs to be overwritten. And here the total underlying held will be uh, total holdings. So here the um, basically uh, the, the net asset value is not updated when we uh, withdraw our holdings. If we wanted to, we would have to call Ave and understand how much equity we have in Ave. And this includes the interest rate that we have uh, earned over time. And in that case, our global state uh, knows so in their C4626, the total supply that fetches this total asset function will know the actual net asset value has increased. And therefore, when you withdraw, let's say your total share, you will withdraw the, the share plus the interest rate. Otherwise, it's as if you have not harvested your, your yield. Uh, again, the harvest here was made to make this process manual because I wanted to learn about this harvest function and uh, you know make it so that uh, it's an only owner function but in general it can be a public function anybody can harvest when the harvest function is public usually uh, there is like a time delay otherwise the gas inefficient it will becomes gas inefficient to always harvest every day the the yield so this will be a design i'll be implementing next um, when i'll do a multi-strategy vault in the harvest, uh, again, here we get, uh, we, we call a bit of uh, public variables and we get the reserve data because we want to uh, basically get the scaled balance and the balance of this harvest so that we have the totally total profit accrued. That is the difference between the balance of this harvest and the balance of the last harvest if one is greater than the other. Otherwise, if it's a negative profit, we set that to zero. And this allows us to um, basically earn fees. So this is a vault that actually has a business model that has fees accrued. We set the fee percent and we mint to ourselves, to our own vault, the fees accrued. Um, then you can claim fees, uh, you can claim other rewards, uh, set fee percent, as I said, uh, get reserve data as a helper function for what I mentioned earlier. Another great feature of this vault that I think uh, was really something that got me thinking was to use the fallback function. So as you can see in the front end earlier that I showed, uh, uh, you can deposit either ETH or wrapped ETH on Gorly, right? Um, when we construct this vault, uh, we are assigning an underlying asset in the constructor and passing that in the year six, ERC for six to six. It basically sets the underlying token of that vault. And if we set that to wrap teeth, uh, the, the vault can only, you can only deposit uh, wrap teeth. What uh, you know the, the point the problem with uh, the problem the, the the extra step you need to do to deposit wrap teeth to a vault like this is that you need to approve the vault which is you know can be a tedious experience especially on the front end you need to sign two transactions um, or, or sorry yeah we effectively do two transactions um, and so the fallback function here is handy because this vault can receive ether. And uh, it will uh, basically deposit uh, um, 
the asset, it will wrap the ether because we're, we're, we're calling the wrapped ether interface on the asset that is wrapped ether. So the vault now has acquired the Ethereum, the Gorilla ETH, wraps it. Since it's still its own wrapped ether, it does not need to approve it anymore. And it, it, go, it calls its own deposit function with a message of value. So this is an interesting way to, again, very efficiently have a tokenized vault that accepts Ethereum and converts it to whatever the um, whatever the currency the vault uh, uses. I do a, a TLDR. So the 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 four six two six is a standard. You pulled it from Soulmate, which is a particularly clean and and simple implementation. And basically, what that has is like deposits and withdraws and a token that represents when you deposit, you get a token back. And then uh, you hook into that. There's sort of like a before deposit and an after withdraw, or maybe after deposit and before withdraw. You hook into that standard. And then so what you've created is a vault that then goes and talks to Aave, and it goes to their rewards and their deposits, and basically sure. takes the standard and lets you ape into some kind of Aave asset. And then the uh, vault gives you back a token that represents it. And then you built some uh, fee structure into your vault. So owners, basically multiple people could ape into this vault and you've got it on the payback function. So you can just literally just like send ETH to it. And that's aping in. Lots of us could ape into it by sending ETH to it. And then we would all have a token that represents some asset that you've uh, programmed into the vault. So you could have some complex strategy program programmed into the vault and For, people can just exactly. send in ETH and be part of it and then withdraw their ETH if it has made money and even have a fee structure. It's pretty cool. This is the intuition exactly, Austin, because then the, the vision for, for this, like this I feel is really the step zero of anybody that wants to do DeFi needs to do because they need to understand how to use the standard, how to implement the standard and how basically a simple strategy works. And the testing is really uh, something that helped me a lot, especially because I did the, uh, the forks. So in the make file here, I did uh, the test mainnet at test Gorley with a mainnet fork URL. And um, this is priceless learning experience because it allows you to, um, with a mainnet fork, uh, put in the actual addresses of the Ave pools, uh, Ave rewards, uh, wrap teeth. Uh, this is actual wrap teeth on Ethereum. And uh, you pass it in the constructor and then uh, you test the entire, this is Foundry, you test the entire, your entire understanding of all of this because then I did also some fuzzing. Um, I tested uh, all sorts of things. And those really, tests run extra fast with Foundry too, right? Isn't that yeah, 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 absolutely. Great. I mean, it takes a bit because you have to fork mainnet, but it's really right. a couple of seconds. Right. What and RPC said, are you using when you fork mainnet? Um, I think in this alchemy case, maybe, or... I used, uh, yes, Alchemy. Okay. But, yeah. Awesome. Okay, we got to go on. We got to go on. We got a lot of presenters. Okay. This is a, a fantastic build. Uh, keep keep building. I'm guessing like your next steps now are sort of to make a more interesting strategy or yeah. you know tinker more into DeFi. Are you going deeper into DeFi or was that enough and you're going to like move on to a different uh, uh, thing within Web3? So I've just, I'm about to complete a leverage token vault. Okay. So when yep. you lever up. And yep. that will be interesting to talk about because there's a lot of learnings because the leverage is expensive. And so it's not convenient to get right. leverage if the API is not high enough. So I'll explain that next time when I have it finished. But then, yes, it will come down to building um, strategies that actually make money and that are actually interesting and, and a multi multi strategy vault. And, and basically, um, when you put in a deposit, it's going to take that deposit and uh, take out a loan with it and then take that and then deposit it and then take yeah. out a loan with it and take that and deposit it. Yeah, and that's yeah. expensive yeah. to roll and unroll. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome and, stuff. And I, Look forward to seeing it next week, man. That's going to be great.
or maybe two weeks, right? Let's yeah, go two yeah, weeks yeah. from now. I might now. not Let's have it in two it. weeks, but in two yeah, weeks yeah, from yeah. now, I, I will have it. Absolutely. Awesome. Sounds okay, good. Dev Thank Daniel, you. you are up. Solid Oracle, great build. Dev Daniel, you are up next. Uh, what do you have for us? Um, so good good morning. Good evening. Um, I am. Um, okay, so I have a couple of projects that they're supposed to be four, basically, but um, just to reduce the size. Um, let me see if I can share my screen. I'm coming. Uh... And then Port, you'll be up next. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh -huh. So, so, um, so basically, what I've been working on are uh, two different projects. Um, so basically, what I've been working on are two different projects. So the first one is something I call Ethereum Oracles. Um, so the core idea of Ethereum Oracles is I want to like look at all the oracles we have, all the different types of oracles we have, and just basically build out the architecture behind it. So um, for instance, I'll give you an example. Um, chain link price feed aggregators. So what happens with chain link price feed aggregators is like there's a node pushing the latest data of that particular thing to the network and just updating it and updating it and updating it. Um, the same thing with um, chain link any API. So with chain link any API, there's a node that you're calling. And it's like, so like in my mind, there's a benefit to understanding the underneath architecture of how these technologies work. So um, so basically, I think I've, I'm almost done with the pool, with the pool, with the pool oracle, but I've worked on the push oracle. So this is the demo for it. So for this is our push oracle. Basically, we have our contract here. We have our contract here. So it's basically updating the price. So anybody, if this was, on mainnet, anybody that wanted to like get the latest price of of dots to USD or Solana to USD or Ethereum to USD, basically. So let me just go into the code and explain it. Um, so basically, we have our normal contract. We have our normal contract. We have our price oracle, um, data payload, all of that, all of that, and we have our consumer contracts, just like how we do normal contracts. Then we have our scripts here. That is basically simulating a chain link node. This is what the chain link node does. It is getting the latest price from um, it is getting the latest price from an API and just updating it to everybody every two to seconds. So on a normal base to like decentralize everything, you have like separate nodes and different things running different, different things. So um that's for the push. Um the pool is not ready, the pool oracle is not ready. But I'm just looking for like, I don't know, I think somehow, somehow it's just like above my head, but I'm trying to figure it out. So on to the next one. Um, the next project is Dynamical. So Dynamical was me and a friend. I'm trying to onboard him to scaffold it. Um, Austin, are you me? Am I going too fast? Does anybody have any question? No, you're great. You're great. You're good. I maybe okay. maybe before we jump to this one, we could take a second to talk about push versus pull. So when you're talking about an oracle that is a push oracle or an oracle that is a pull oracle, and you're talking about a consumer, we should probably just talk about that just for a second, just so everybody knows. Basically, within uh, Chainlink, you can go to VRF and you can get uh, uh, or or you can get a price data, not VRF. VRF is for randomness, but the yeah. way it works is. You either ask for it and then they call back to you with a callback or you go to their node and pull from it. Right. And I think that like the the difference between the push and the pull is is and I'm, I'm not sure if I understand it, but <laughs> pull, pull, pull is pull when you're waiting for them to make a callback back to you. Yeah. Is that a pull oracle? OK, um, so a pull oracle is when you send it and you wait for okay. it to like respond to you. Why the callback a yeah. separate contract that is being updated on its own. So Got like, it. let me give you an example. Um, so I think with these data feed aggregators here, so this is data feed aggregators. The way chaining data feed aggregators work is that they are just contracts and they are nodes constantly updating the value of those contracts, the latest value of the contracts. So when you come here and you say um, dot latest value, you are getting the latest value that a node somewhere is updating. 
So, so, so probably cool. one of these is going to be a little bit more up to date than the other one. I'm guessing a poll is going to give you the most live data, most whereas a push, data, yeah. a push is going to be like maybe one block behind or something because yeah, someone yeah, yeah. got live data and then put it up and you're reacting to yeah. it versus getting it yeah. fresh. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, um, awesome. So um, I think I'm also working on the pool, but I'm not done with it because I have to like um, do something with buffers, react and um, smart contract buffers like... I think I'll be using the library very soon, like, but something we both are, that's how I said it's supposed to be for. <laughs> Let's chill on that. So, um, so uh, yeah, so I'm looking, I'm also looking for somebody to help me to, and so this is it, this is it. So later on, we're going to be talking about chain link within the project. We're going to be talking about chain link. We're going to be talking about consensus oracles. Basically what I've been able to focus on since is inbound oracles. Um, I also wanted to do like, a simulation of chain link automations, the way chain link automations work. So if you can simulate running this thing, okay, basically I've not started that, but I'm explaining it for those that are interested in coming on board. So basically the way chain link um, automations work is that it runs your contract off chain. It runs your contract off chain and see if you match the condition. So then you now decide to call the perform upkeep function and the rest of the rest. So we're also going to be adding that to it very soon. So cool. is everybody clear on this? Yep. I think we're on the right page now. Let's go to the second. Let's go to the second build though. I think so we got it. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the second is um this is something I did for Chainlink Hackathon, but I we were not able to finish it. So um I just said I like it was too much. Like initially when we started, we thought it would be like, oh, two days were done. But like as we started building out, we now realize that oh yeah, you guys are building too much. So the core idea of um dynamical here is um the core idea of dynamical here is um we want users to be able to make subscriptions. Like the core idea is um let me just let me just give you a walkthrough. Um so let's say get started here. So basically there are different kinds of subscriptions. So what happens here is that we run this some automation off chain, like basically trading strategies. Um there are some trading strategies that are like time based. There are some trading strategies that are based on asset price. There are some trading strategies that are based on inflation rate. Like, okay, let me explain the inflation rate strategy. Um, for instance, if USDT goes down by a couple percentage, you want to buy as much as you can buy before it comes back up. Like, is everybody following me? Yep. Um, yeah. So, um, so also asset price. For instance, if it falls by ten percent, you want to sell as much before any other person starts selling if it's like once you notice it's like let it just be running on chain also trading volume so um basically what we implemented was time based trading volume okay let me just give you a workshop so what happens in time base is you come you say okay i want this particular subscription to run every hour you proceed um is it going to buy or sell assets yes it's going to buy asset or sell asset or add liquidity to a liquidity pool um, so let's say by assets, then you select the token you want it to run, how much percentage, like what's the percentage change before you should run that particular function and um, amount in USDT. So after that, you've created a subscription. Um, I've not really changed this because I don't want to, because Chainlink has, um, the Chainlink hackathon had a rule that you should not really make changes to the code until after the hackathon. So. So when you come back here, you have your subscription. So what happens when your subscription is done is it's running on chain. You don't have to be worried. Once it's once that condition is met, it's going to automatically execute it, and you get your USDT, get your sushi, get whatsoever tokens you like set for it. Is everybody following me? Are you there? Yep. Yep. Sorry. We're following you. Yeah. Sorry. I was, I couldn't get my mic on un, unmuted. Yeah. Uh, we got to so, hurry though. We got other people that need to present too. So uh, yeah, yeah. let's, yeah, yeah. Let. So, um, yeah. So let me just, should I walk through the code? Um, let me see if I can walk through the code. Um, so basically what we're doing is, um, um, basically what we're doing, we have our oracles here. Um, we have our asset price oracles that are dependent on other oracles. We have our data feed oracles that are also dependent on other oracles. We have our upkeeps that are like managing everything. Then we have our subscription factory. Basically, um, the architecture is a bit complicated, but basically every user is going to set up their own factory, their own um, their own monitoring contract and everything. 
and I think this is it. This is it. So it just okay. Who so I think you wrote these? Who wrote those contracts? I is it poor? I think it's poorly written because I was just like in a haste. I don't know. It's a lot of contracts. That's a lot of solidity. <laughs> yeah, but like no, the the thing here is the thing here is um the thing here is um how would I put it? The thing here is that like for instance, if you are not using for instance, when I create a subscription, why I have the subscription factory there is that when I create a subscription, when I create a time-based subscription, so it goes to the subscription factory and it creates a subscription contract for you, depending on the type you choose. So like we don't have too much jumbled up codes together. That was just like, that was the core thinking. Cool, man. Cool, Bill. That's a lot of solidity to put together. That's a lot to, to build, but that's a cool project. And that's good for like yeah, learning yeah. oracles too. Yeah, it's nice. like, yeah. So a lot of um chain link automations here, yeah, like a lot of chain link automations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. Awesome. Okay, yeah. great builds, um, great builds, Daniel. Both of them. All right. Next up is Port. What do you got for us, Port? All right. Hello. So great build, Solid Oracle and Dev Daniel. And today I got something small, and I think I can just do it in. Uh, yeah, we should start two. compressing the time, huh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So what I have built is a simple um, web application that gives you a vanity address, and it also helps you claim the same vanity address, at the beginning letters uh, in the in the in ENS registry. So let me show you how it's used. Let's use F0A, and we first check the ENS availability. And if it says yes, let's go and we click generate. Then it quickly starts generating the uh, vanity address for us using web workers. And when it finds one, it shows us the uh, private key, private key with the vanity address. So if the user, if the user of the application likes it, uh, the user can click show and copy that private address. I I know it's not uh, as good as having a mnemonic phrase, but yeah. Um, still okay. And the user can also click at this link to go to the ENS website to claim the name. So that way the user will have the address, the vanity address, and the .eth ENS uh, name for it as well. So how I achieve that is, is basically an, an XJS app uh, using Tailwind here. It's when the user clicks the generate button, it's sends a signal to uh, this file worker service, then it creates eight uh, web workers. And this uh, in this file, I used ethers to generate a wallet um, and you know check if it's um, appropriate, check as if, it's, it's, if it's okay or not. And here I try to learn more about Tailwind CSS and you know uh, improve my front end skills a bit here too. So yeah, this is it. It was actually a one day build. So there is not much uh, to talk about here. Uh, so let me go over it. So you kind of pick out a few characters that you might want for your identity. Yeah. And then you check to make sure that those are available on ENS. And if they are, then you generate your identity by jamming uh, brute force through accounts looking for one that yeah, creates absolutely. the address. Yeah. And then the, this last part where you copy paste the private key, definitely like it should be there. You should be able to eject the private key out. But if this was scaffold ETH2, you could actually hit a button and take that private key and put it in as your burner wallet and log mm -hmm. into ENS as that user, which could be really nice. Because then you could one button basically uh, go start like uh, making transactions with that and like as that account into uh, ENS and other things. So that could be a fun yeah. next step. Yeah. Cool yeah, one limitation uh, of this is that uh, only hexadecimal characters can be used in a in an address. So you can't just go and put <laughs> a title like this here. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That's yeah. fun. That's a that's a. Uh, I did uh, like a blocky miner a long time ago that would just generate accounts and compare it to another account's blocky visually, like looking at the pixel colors, trying to find one. Mining at Bruce, brute force really makes you yeah, respect it's fun. <laughs> the, security, the security level of Ethereum, realizing that like you could sit there and mine for the, you know, the rest of time and never find an address with 
with money in it. It's kind of a Before thing. building this, I had no idea how the addresses were generated. So like I didn't know how what a web broker was. So seeing how those work and how I can use them to generate addresses a lot faster than normal uh, was a good, really good experience for me. Kind of reminds me of the mining that happens in Dark Forest. There's like a web worker that's like I, I don't I don't I don't actually know how it works, but it's like mining. It's like crunching on numbers, brute force, trying to discover the map while you're playing. It probably uses something like this, some kind of tricks where you yeah. can have higher uh, higher CPU stuff. Okay, H. I don't even know who is who is H. Uh, it's just H on the hello? list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yep, we got you. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me show. All right, charity stream v2. Yeah, this is my hackathon submission. I couldn't attend when everyone did, so I'm doing awesome. Now. So this is the second version. I changed like UI was bad in the first one, and like I, you know, just a little bit uh, smart contract optimization. Or, but fundamentally, it's the same. So first, you can create a campaign. You know, just put the name, how much you want, and how long you your campaign will be. So you can pick like minutes, hours, days. Uh, then people can donate if they support your campaign. Then you can finish uh, or stop campaign and refund money. Uh, finish campaign doesn't check if you actually um, uh, received uh, amount you wanted. Just you know, it's sometimes if you get like ninety percent of your uh, asked amount, you can you know you can be satisfied with that. So uh, you can finish campaign if it's successful and you are satisfied. You can finish. Then you can create a proposition how to spend it, uh, receive money. So you pick your campaign, you describe how you want to spend, uh, how much amount. You cannot spend more than you, you receive. And when you create a proposition, uh, it locks your uh, F, so you cannot dump a spend. And how, how long? Mm, then you can put like one second, you can put like 30 days, if it's like month payment, uh, and duration of which you pick. Uh, then you end proposition. If it's successful, if people who donated like agree with how you want to spend, uh, the smart contract will create this team. If it's not, it will just unlock your uh, locked amount of ETH. So, and with the stream, it just uh, streams so you can, like, it just shows receivers uh, when it starts, uh, how much our amount is left and available. And if you are a receiver, you can, with, I think it's like, yeah, if it, you are a receiver, you can just zero funds. Um, and this, yes, this is it. And the uh, homepage, you can just check the latest campaign, latest proposition like general information, you can get info uh, from the smart, like the first one, it just shows the name, starts everything. Uh, I wanted to use IPFS for this this version, but it's just too slow. So I kind of left it like this. The blockchain was faster. Um, yeah, it shows the all info, the same with proposition. Like, uh, yes, it shows everything you need to know, the votes, the payment duration, everything, and the stream is the same. Like, um, and for donation, you can just pick a campaign, donate the amount you want, and vote. Uh, I use quadratic vote, so basically it means that for every way, uh, the next vote you buy, it's more expensive than the previous one. So it's kind of, um, let me, I think I, oops. Uh, yeah, yeah, here, like, you can see that eyes are like five times less than nice, but the account that vote nice, then it's, I think, 10 times more than nice. So it's kind of, he doesn't like dominate votes, but still kind of has like five times more votes, but it's not as much as, so it's basically, it's better for, against like whales. So they won't like do whatever they want. Um, cool. So yeah, you, you donate. It's kind of like Patreon, right? Like, like Web3 yeah, yeah, Patreon. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. And, and also like, so... the support and refunds you can withdraw. Yes. And that's you... like, you want to make it like really easy for someone to come donate. I feel like it's super hard for someone to donate now because they have to like know the campaign ID. Like if you were sharing this, you'd want to, if you were starting a campaign, you'd want to have like this really nice shareable link and someone clicks it and it like fills in all the information and it oh, just yeah, like you lets can, you YOLO funds yeah, yeah. in. Yeah. I mean, you can this even cool. show like for now, I just show numbers. Like I yeah. supported second campaign. I can take, but it's like, I mean, it was first time like writing front. End. So for me, it's yep. a big, big thing. But I mean, <laughs> this you is can, great. Like, show, like, yeah, this you is a really good it's, first it's, front end. If this is your first front end, I mean, it's technically second. The chart one was <laughs> the first one, so it's better. Uh, the first one was just bad, but um, yeah, you can donate. You can just do. It's simple. Um, 
Yeah, the only bad thing I I wanted to use a PFS, but the PFS is too slow. It is like I I like how you just put one, you put two, it just reads everything from the blockchain. But um, yeah, everything else is just just uh, simple, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's it. Great, uh, great build. So... Good scaffold ETH. Are you going to keep building with scaffold ETH? Are you continuing your? I have some your plans. Awesome. No, I have some plans to build, so I'll see if I can. As, uh, you should uh, reach out to me on Telegram too. I'm not sure if we're connected on Telegram. It'd be good if we uh, could get connected and uh, we can talk more async okay. about just cool new things to build next. Great build though. I think I did like when I... Uh, Maybe we are. <laughs> my my Telegram's finished. a mess. <laughs> yeah, like, Re okay, reach out, I'll, ping I'll, me again. Ping me again, just in case. I'll build something and maybe I'll show you. Or... We'll see. We'll see. Yes. That sounds good too. All right, Valentin. Yeah. Valentin is up next. Uh, good, good build. H. <laughs> All right, everyone. Great builds, everyone. Um, so good. Okay. So my name is Valentine Orga Ugochuku. Um, and I uh, would like to share. I plan to share one build, but I will. I will, I would love to share one as a legacy build or something. So, uh, sorry. Hold on. Sorry, I'm having issues with the uh, okay. Oh my god. Um hello? Yo, yo, Can yeah, I... we got you. Yeah. You, if you have to restart, you yeah, okay, but my share is, is it permissions? Screen. Okay, that's okay. Go do that. We'll we'll go to Lou Locks next. So Lou Locks, if you're around, fire away and we'll come back to Valentine uh when y'all get your security right. I, I had that same thing happen to me yesterday, so don't worry about it. It's no big deal. All right, man. thanks. Oh, Lulox, Lulox, no, uh, uh oh, I think we're all the way to Alex then. If Alex is out there, oh, wait, maybe Lulox. I, I, I can't. No, I, okay. I can't, I can't connect my PC. Ah, oh, darn. Okay. All good. All good. Uh, is Alex out there? Do we, I don't know if Alex is on. I don't see Alex either. Okay. And then Code Chef. Oh, we got Code Chef. I see Code Chef. Code Chef, what do you think about uh, showing off? Oh yeah, sure. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, I like oh, this. I yeah, so <laughs> I do a simple game. Um, it's called the E Monster. So you control the E Monster to eat as much E as possible. But however, the some E are fake, so you can like oops. So we can like oh. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, is it working? Yeah, it's working. Yeah. There we go. Wow. Oh my god. Like, I think. So I'm using a random number. Um, so yeah, so you just keep connecting all the eaves and hopefully you no. get something. And so I'm using like random number. So so if you get like between one zero to five, you lose a life. So yeah. So like each you get get like three nice uh, cost of zero point one eve. And hopefully, I guess something. Uh, yeah, very simple game. I love how you like bumped into that block. What? What? How does it? Yeah. What is that? That is great. Like oh, a little two D um, physics yeah, engine kind of thing. Yeah, I'm using Kabo JS to build like two cool. D games. And, oh yeah, the walls are not supposed to move. But, uh, I'll, I'll fix that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's very simple. Yeah, I haven't got like to get Eve. You got the net on number seven, but I haven't got seven yet. So how is the fake ETH hidden? Could you um could you look on chain or somehow uh, figure out which ETH is real and which ETH is not? How does it work? Oh, oh yeah. So on um, my smart contract. Um, oh, oops. Um, let's see now. All right, points. Yeah. So I'm using like a random number. So I will get like random numbers, and if you if you get a random number of seven, you will earn win one ETH. But if you get less than five, you will lose a life. Um, anything else, you can, nothing happens. Uh, very right. simple. Code. So just block hash, just like going going with previous block hash. It works for this, so that's yeah. good. Yep. As you, uh, I don't know if, if everyone here has gone through it yet, but if you haven't gone through speedrunethereum.com on speedrunethereum.com, there's yeah, a dice challenge. Yeah. <laughs> There's a dice challenge that teaches you about block randomness and when you can use block hash and when you can't. And uh, it, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Depends on the the use case. I think this is a fun little front end game that uh, it works fine. 
It's cool. It's entertaining too. This is the most entertaining build so far, I think. When there's a little game, when something's moving around, it's so much fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's all I've got. <laughs> Great build. Are you going to keep going? Are you, are you going to get more into game building or what's where are you going with it? Where are you going from here? Yeah, I'm going to build more, more games. Um, yeah, I got yeah. some ideas what to build next. Um, have you messed around with any zero knowledge stuff yet? I feel like ZK stuff in combination with blockchain just works really well because ZK, you can hide things and blockchain, you can save things and make them very available. The combination of those two with maybe like L2s, I'm really excited about L2s and games and ZK. Um, okay, yeah, I'll take a look at zero knowledge. Heck yeah, yeah. heck yeah. Reach out reach out if I can help with anything too. I yeah. uh, we're, we're trying to build some games ourselves, so we'll come collab. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, thank you. Good build. Okay, uh, Valentin, you back? Yeah. yeah. Um, let's, okay. Let's try it uh, out. I thought that last time the uh, permission was a mess. Um, okay, so um, I have got what well, I've I've got first things first. Can you, can you see my screen? Can you see my terminal? Right. Yep. Cool desktop. As a legacy build, I will present the Yeet CLI. Right. So. Uh, ECLI is a CLI tool that helps you to query the blockchain, interact with smart contracts, all that good stuff, right? So let's start with something simple because there's no time. Say I want to get the account balance of the build deal, right? On mainnet. I just I do that. And as you can see, sorry, network is a bit, uh, a bit of a mess, but as you can see, build guild is rich with 39 ether, right? So it could be an address as well. So if I pull, if, if I pull my, uh, oh my God, sorry. <laughs> Wait, not MetaMask. <laughs> yeah. Wait, not MetaMask. Okay, so let's see. Let's see. This one should be zero though, but it's still, still oh, sorry. Oh my God. Okay, so we go. So was this kind of part of your like uh like eth tech tree i don't know if you've seen the eth tech tree but it's sort of like do speed run ethereum and then build your own command yeah line yeah, yeah, yeah yeah is that I, where you I, got this I yeah my build, uh, i pulled my build from the, my next presentation is not from the tech tree though that one was okay. more inspired a build from the tech tree but as you can see i just created my balance on mumbai right so you can select network network actually the first one was a main net you can generate account as well you know, there are many things you can build. So let's just go to help. You can see a whole lot of it. So you can see, you can interact with the smart contracts. You can read, you can write to a smart contract. Um, you can add an ABI, get the account balance, get the block, get the, you can generate an account. You can watch for events on this and a whole lot of it. You can show transactions, transfer funds as well to define this on any EVM compatible chain. So to install it, you can just go using Yarn and do this. And it installs it, right? I had issues with NPM. I'm still trying to fix that one, but Yarn works very great, right? So that is that one. So, Yeet CLI um, is a good name. Yeah. Good build. Everyone should make their own CLI. Everyone out there listening, you should make your own CLI just to Austin, learn how to do it. I discussed with Austin about it, so it was actually kind of interesting. I used it a lot on my other builds, so it's very, 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 very good build. Um, okay, so for that's, that's Yeet CLI. Second build would be the bridge. Uh, so this is the token bridge. So what this bridge, what it, what it does is it takes tokens on native. Currently, we only bridge native tokens, right? So ignore the drop down. You just want token there. Yeah, I mean, wake up tomorrow and decide to bridge ER20 tokens. That's the whole point of the drop down. But the the point of the bridge is to bridge um, is to bridge native tokens on one chain to another chain, right? So you, you look at the UI, you can see that we are bridging Mumbai to Sepolia. So we are bridging. Matic, which is the native token of Mumbai, Polygon Mumbai, to Sepulia. <laughs> no, so no, no. we mean we mean the Matic C on on Sepulia, right? So let's. So first of all, we I'm currently now we have I'm having issue with the server because I didn't actually pay pay money to kind of host the server on you know it's a standard thing. So I have to actually run the server locally at the moment because I'm, I don't want to spend money on paying for server and stuff to get the more consistent here. So we we'll start the server locally. So we have that. Node more, node more, give me something. All right. This is also good for DeFi as well. So you can see I'm listening for, I've, what I did was I created the EVE, I created a vault, 
um, for each chain. So we've got the ETH vault, we've got the Matic vault. So the vault, you transfer money to this address, right? And the way it's set up, okay, let me just interact with it and I'll explain the smart contract. So now we're on, Mon we're on Mumbai, right? So if I wanted to go from street, I would just switch network. But let's just start with Mumbai and say I want to bridge 0 0.01 Matic over to, as you can see, it also validates the input. So let's say I want to bridge 0 0.1 Matic over to Sepolia, right? So Currently, I've got, um, because I know I've done this a couple times, so let's check. So now I've got 1.44 Matic. Let's, let's go to Sepolia and see how much Matic C I've got. I've got 0 0.0089, right? So let's connect our wallet on Sepolia. And let's, uh, so here is where you can now test the switching of networks, right? So your network is not on Mumbai, but I want to bridge from Mumbai, so you can click on switch network. I need to switch the network for you and update the UI accordingly. You have to reconnect. It's a bit of a pain, but it's minor, so you can, you can deal with that, of course. So now you go from, you want to bridge 0 0.1. So you go 0 0.1, click on deposit. And what happens then? Server is still running. We sign the trans, oh my, it's okay. We sign the transaction and we wait because it's blockchain and you have to wait a couple seconds <laughs> but when this is when this is done you all you get is okay see so we have actually deposited 0, 0.0 because we extract a fee of one percent right the one percent fee so we, instead of 0 0.1 it's 0 0.009 right then what i what happens in the server is that it means you see so it means that amount that you deposited minus the one percent fee it means it's on sepolia so if i check on if i check sepolia right now and it gives the option to add it to metamask but you have to switch to the network that you bridge to so if i check on sepolia now i'll see matic c which is the clone of matic on mumbai so we see if i switch to sepolia i see an update awesome you see that because 0 0.0089 and now it's 0 0.1 because we added the 0 0.099 minus the 1% fee is as indicated here. So you can see you receive 0 0.009. That way you always updated about what's going on. If I want to move from Sepolia, I can do the same thing. I have to connect my wallet though. So I connect my wallet and uh, yeah, I'm on Sepolia. So I don't have to switch network. If I want to go from my audio terms, go for Sepolia and then we have this and then you can bridge as well. It works the same way. I want to add my teach to make them uh, say it's your first time and you've not actually Done, you can just add to the metamask just for ease and it kind of adds that and that is just it. So so for the and you can withdraw as well, right? You can withdraw the money out. You can withdraw the money out. So you've got hello. I, am I too fast or not too fast? I'm trying to um no, you're good. That. I think we're just getting a little bit of feedback there. I'm not even sure where it's coming from, but uh, I think we're you're, you're good though. This makes a lot of sense. Having all this UI here together for bridging and and the yeah, switch yeah, it, between it, it, the two, the add the thing to the wallet, like all of this is so nice. We need to have this available just for forking and cloning. It's good. It's good. It's good for DeFi as well, right? Because you may need to work with the, the token on one chain or another chain. For now, it's on test network, but you know it could it could go main mainstream if, if it goes right. I mean, the, but it's funny that like the React is my most <laughs> my most exciting piece of this. But like being able to get in here and just copy paste some of your React would be helpful for a lot of devs, <laughs> just because React's a pain in the butt sometimes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I I just try to make the UI more um, user friendly. But, uh, if I had the server working better, I would be. But it's okay. It's okay for now. It's just a local server. So now we want to. Let's say we want to withdraw um a Matic C because we just breathe Matic C. I want to withdraw Matic C. Matic C is on. Sepolia, right? It was on Mumbai, which we bought on Sepolia since we bridged it from Mumbai to Sepolia. So we move. So how much Matic C do we have? How much should we withdraw? Let's withdraw, let's withdraw 0 0.1, right? Let's, uh, let's just withdraw 0 0.1 Matic C. So server is still running. So we have 0 0.1 Matic C, we withdraw. And we confirm. All right, then we wait because it's blockchain. And I honestly, I don't know if blockchain could be a bit faster. I mean, you know, it improved, but it could be like, Two seconds or something because whenever i make the video presentations for this i always have to cut off the time it's supposed not to waste the viewers uh this thing but we wait and yes sepoli is way too slow <laughs> yeah, so it burned it burned uh 0, 0.0 with one ETH, like i said i burned it you know and then it transferred it to the ad you, uh, your address on mumbai so it's like you have your 0 0.1 ETH back right so that's that so if we go back to mumbai 
if you go back to Mumbai, I'm very sure it was 1.43, right? Because we reverse bridged 0 0.1. Or is it one point? Yeah. Well, you see now it's 1.44 because we just withdrew the 0 0.1. Withdrew. And if we check Sepulia's balance again, you see that one, 0 0.1 has been burned. As you can see, we're, back, we're, right, we're right back where we where we started. So that's just how it works. Um, now, for the um, if you're interested in the smart contract, let me show you how it works and how I thought about it. Initially, the, the idea was to kind of have a, a wallet address like the a vault address and I could transfer to that address and then use them listening for the transfer events on that address. But then I realized I could actually manage this with a smart with smart contracts, right? So let's say, uh, okay, no, sorry, the back end. This, let's say the, you know, let's say we want to bridge to Sepolia, right? We want to we want to bridge to Mumbai. I want to bridge Sepolia ETH to Mumbai. And I want to have a clone of Sepolia ETH on Mumbai. So how do we do? This is the vault. This is the vault that manages the, Actual tokens that you want to bridge over. So how you how it works? This is like wrapping ETH on the same chain, but you're actually wrapping it on another chain, right? Kind of like wrap BTC. So you have this vault, and what you do is that you transfer money to the. You don't need to actually interact with any function. You just need to literally, literally, you can take the address of this vault on that on the on the on the chain you want to bridge from, and you transfer it, and what it does, it validates, right? And it extracts the fee, one percent fee. And then updates the amounts, updates the nonce. The nonce is very important because if for some reason the the the, the server is down and let's say um, a user has a failed transaction, a failed bridge to transfer, this would be a very very good way to kind of re re resolve it, right? You could you could read all the deposits from the from from Etherscan or something. Now have a, a ETCLI can actually feed you those events, so you could you could read it and you could validate you validate if the nonce has been processed or not by calling this function if it hasn't then you can actually like um, go through with uh, making the transaction it won't actually let you even if you try to use it knows that have not been so lulox asks a great question in the chat uh they say so it creates something like weth on both ends and it's sort of yeah, like I weth where where you deposit but you're depositing and you're not getting anything back with weth you would deposit and you would get an erc20 back or you'd put in your erc20 and you'd get your eth back yeah. In this case, it, it it does half of that in one smart contract, and then triggers an event, and then some um, middleware layer moves it over, and then gets it going on the other. Yep. Exactly, the bridge is kind of a centralized. It's a centralized medium, right? So with worth, what you have, I did actually. If you check, this is token wrapper, right? This is like a follow up of token wrapper. I already did token wrapper. This is the you can check it in my build build profile. Now this is the one that you know. Right? This is the normal bridging that you know. So what this, uh, I don't like lightning, okay. <laughs> so I'm a bit blind. Look at this, you're just like cranking out web apps too. This is awesome, yeah, dude. <laughs> I just play around with it a bit. So if you have, a, what you see, what you know as the normal token wrapper, which is the one I saw from the tech tree is to build a token wrapper like web. What this does, it kind of bridges. I created a build, build, um, you know, a nice build, build uh, token, if anyone is interested. <laughs> but. Yeah, what, what this does is it, it actually wraps the token on that chain, right? So you have Mumbai and you've got um you've got um you've got Mumbai. Okay, I, I have not added okay, I removed Sepolia, right? I, I, I was still trying to at that time I couldn't switch networks and make the UI to populate, right? Because it I had issues with if I switch network, the WAGME does not update their provider, they don't update anything. So I had to kind of manually create the effect of um reading balances off of the new provider from the new chain. Someone made um, a comment on the group about reading it from the MetaMask instead of from Wagme, which actually helped me a lot. That's how I was able to achieve it in Token Bridge. So I'll have to update Token Wrapper with that feature as well. But currently we have Mumbai. And what Mumbai does in, um, in this Token Wrapper, we are bridging only uh, wrapping and tokens on Mumbai. So we can wrap Matich, Matich and we can unwrap it here as the this thing, Matich. So this is a wrap this thing. This is the one you know where you kind of transfer Matich to the vault and it wraps Matic and gives you the on the same chain. But now with token bridge, with token bridge, what you have is that you transfer it on that chain and it wraps it on another chain, right? So you can you know you can have Sepulia ETH on one chain on Sepulia, but you want Sepulia on another chain as an ERC20 token, so you can maybe do any DeFi protocol interactions or something. So that's we, the, we probably that's shouldn't like, say wrap. We should probably just say it's deposited on one chain or or even it's burned on one chain and it's minted on another chain. 
yeah, yeah, that was burn it on one side and then there's some kind of communication layer more yeah. centralized or less centralized but then <laughs> on the other chain uh it's minted yeah yeah bridging bridging at the moment is more centralized and decentralized at the moment right the token wrapper is fully decentralized because it, it's on one chain right but to actually move between chains there are no chain apis at least not to my knowledge if you know any tell me right if you know anyone tell me i'll, I'll update my build but there are no um, chain apis that that's basically sit between two different chains so you have to kind of view that as a centralized system and look look at things like connect uh C O N E X T and just like hop protocol is really good for okay. moving between uh different chains and different l2s but, okay, but okay. also like this is the same thing as the oracles we saw earlier right like i i don't think that you should be building your own bridge i don't think that you should be building your own oracle uh yet right but but it's good to build it and try it and understand the the impl implications of it right the fact that yeah. a bridge really is just like uh, a token getting burned in a smart contract on this side and then you know a multi-sig in the middle that listens for those events and then mints over on this side and there's all these implications of these eoas that hold keys that control these multi-sigs it's just such a good thing to get into and understand that like a bridge is not really that complicated but it's like infinitely complicated because of the humans that control it. And the the more you can decentralize it and less human control, uh, the better probably. But bridge security is such a hard thing. Same thing with oracles and building an oracle system. These, these are like complicated systems, but it's fun to build a toy version first to really understand how it works and understand the implications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dope. Yeah. So, awesome. So that's, so that's my build and... Uh... That's it. That's, that's just it. So hope you guys like it. Yeah, I, I'm excited to see your next five scaffold ETH builds. You're cr you're cranking through them very quickly. Hit me up <laughs> if you're if you're stuck or you're looking for something new to build. I think I'll say that kind of to everybody on the call. Like, hit me up on Telegram directly if you're looking for your next thing to build and you're not sure what to build. Like, this is great to see all y'all building so many cool things. If you if you get stuck or you're looking for inspiration or something, always reach out. Great. Hey, I just have a quick question about the yeah, build. Yeah. So um, you, they talked about the burning and minting. So I was kind of confused because, you know, when you get to the other chain, um, the value part. So if you were just minting a, a random token or something, you wouldn't be able to like have value or exchange it or something. So how does that part work when you say you get to mint the token? Okay, the, the token value, right? Okay, I, I'm at the token. The token value has not been arranged yet. So I, I have not yet actually really gone into the value. I currently just bridge the tokens as they are, right? So for the token value, you know, I know you would need to kind of uh, go through with the DEX and it's it's a whole new DeFi section in the entire bridge. So this is more of a, how do I call it? More of a prototype build than a, a fully complete build because of the value aspect of it and also the backend aspect of it. But, but that's something to ponder about. Actually. In the context of a live bridge, how does that work? I mean, so, maybe anyone on the call has any idea how that works. So you're saying like a token, uh, let's just say there's a token on mainnet and then there's another token on optimism. And you're saying that if that token is worth $100 on mainnet and you burn it, and then you mint it over on optimism you're saying that it's sort of lost its value but i think the goal would be that it's still worth a hundred dollars over on optimism and you can trade it as a hundred dollar asset and then eventually you will burn it on optimism and remint it back on mainnet um but but maybe i'm not completely understanding the the question uh yeah i was actually wondering if they actually burn it or maybe they just like take it and then they have like a pool where they get to like issue uh the other token on on the on the receiving chain or something because uh how would you uh the how would the minting really work you can't just mint any token you were bridging because that would be like a, a different address or something and then you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to use it in a DeFi protocol because it would have a different address and the value or something does yeah, you're going to have you're going to have a maybe a different token on a different network that basically represents the locked up version of this token. Yeah, you you, you um you would not like bridge 
one token over and then turn it into another token that exists on another network. Like like each one of these, basically there's the assumption that the, the token is owned on mainnet first and then it's it's locked up somewhere and then minted somewhere else. But if it's minted on optimism, it, it's still represented by all the tokens that are held locked up in that bridge right if if there's if there's a thousand dollars worth of tokens circulating on optimism it means there's a thousand dollars worth of tokens locked up on the main net side of the bridge and eventually when those tokens on optimism get burned again and they'll get re-released on on main net okay okay that makes sense cool okay uh Mertzken, you're the last you're the last one last but not least you want to hit us up with uh your your latest build uh, yeah. Am I? Am I? Or Bert was there before? Oh me? wait! Oh wait! Did we? Uh, is Bert? Bert, are you still around? I'm sorry. Did I mess that up? Oh, where is Bert? He was oh, here. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I might. Oh. Need, I may need to reach out to Bert. Oh yeah, I said Bert is up next. Yeah. Okay. So Extra, I didn't like kick I him saw... out or anything, but maybe we just <laughs> ran out of time. We'll have to have Bert next. I'll 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 reach out. If anybody has his contact, let me know and I'll reach out. But you go ahead, Mert Ken. Let's finish it off. Yeah, I can show video. my uh, video. Actually, actually, I was going to share uh, the last oh last upgrades for my Dex implementation from Speedrun. Actually, I I we did this with my team for my graduation project. Actually, we uh, presented this our this project to our uh, instructors, and I wanted to show the latest version for my implementation you can see it right yep but we don't have audio hope that's okay oh it looks good oh no i've got audio yeah actually it's just a background for background actually there's a mobile application uh, maybe i can show turn it off and there is a mobile application uh for people that uh, when they go outside uh let's say we when they go to uh I don't know, maybe theater or cinema, and they can use QR code and they can use a uh, happy token. And also it's po just point in the mobile application. And also there is a conversion rate uh, after, before actually you can see it. And people also uh, use QR code and they can get the discounts from different brands. And also, the, they can use the uh, social media part in our mobile application. And also, they can earn points uh, since the, this is like very simple, actually. And also, this is the uh, demo from our mobile application, the login part. Uh, they can see discounts from different brands. It's Turkish, but some parts, yeah, they can use it. They can explore and also they can uh, change their profiles. And also there's a business part and business can uh, make a collaboration with us and they can share their discounts and they can get new customers thanks to us. Uh, this is the implementation. And this is also from uh, social media part. And also this is the uh, they can earn points. They can scan the QR code from this, like for demo. And yes, here is the part that we can uh, deal. Yeah, they the user sends the withdrawal request that they earned uh, from the by writing their wallet address and withdraw amount. And we can see the uh, this request from our admin panel from our uh, scaffold it. Uh, I we used PostgreSQL and we can see the request here. The user sends the request and here is the DEX implementation. This is the first we share the user. We, we see the user's account. Uh, they have no happy balance like I showed here. And we create a different UI for admin. And now we are connecting to the admin. And yes, if we can, huh, yeah. And we can see the admin panel also here. And yeah, the request that comes from the uh, mobile application, it can be seen here. 
the user requests and all according to our uh, maybe evaluation metrics for different evaluation metrics we can uh, approve and send the happy tokens to our customers from admin panel we can we use a different uh, uh, conversion rate we approve and send the tokens to our users i can make this up because we i used sepolia and yes i can speed it up and did you deploy a dex too like is there a dex from the speed run here yeah. swapping tokens okay yep did you did you implement slippage protection in your dex actually i think no nah. it's just <laughs> using, <laughs> I think it's, it's like just using yeah, the price depends. yeah go ahead uh they're just using the price formula that we implemented there is a, a liquidity liquidity uh, total liquidity it can be seen here we send it to the contract and it can it can it uses the liquidity like this and let's say 0 0.5 happy token equals to this much and also we use a 0 0.3 uh, percent fee it's like it like the challenge and also it's this is the part that use we send the tokens to our cost, customers and also they can use their tokens that they earn from our mobile application to the real money it's like the, this is the demo here and this is the thanks to dex challenge of speed Ethereum, and I, I implemented it to uh, scaffold it too uh, i can cool. handle here and it approve function it approved and also after after approving we use swap and user finally swap token and yeah this is the qr code for our, our uh, decks for our that, tokens that's great that's awesome i think that's uh it's it's one of those things that you have to talk about when you are uh extending the decks is there's something that we've taken out of the dex challenge because i didn't want people to have to worry about it i wanted them to focus on the price function but there is slippage protection basically and the only all you have to do to implement it is have when you're going token to eth or eth to token there's a second variable there where you say a, a minimum amount back so you would put in one eth and you need to get at least a thousand tokens back and if you put in one ETH and you only get 100 tokens back, like it reverts, it's just like a little check there to see how far away from the expected price it gets. And so people could sandwich attack that basically. But also it, it comes down to just a busy network and lots of people trading. We we don't see that a lot on localhost, but after yeah. you get through the decks, I think the next step <laughs> after that is to learn slippage protection and that stuff. Yeah, but I've absolutely. deployed one of these to Gnosis where there's real money, and I don't think I had slippage protection on it just as a as a test, and it still works and it swaps right. That you just get into trouble with sandwich attacks eventually, but uh, at, at this level you're probably good. But just uh, you know, a thing to know as you get uh, into it farther is you'll you'll get sandwiched if you put this on on mainnet yeah absolutely we need to nope. protect our customers <laughs> yeah yep great build all right i think we did it bowtie friday we ran a little bit long but uh looking at the list of folks i thought it was going to go a lot longer especially when our first couple presentations were like 15 minutes so when you got good stuff to show off you got good stuff to show off i understand all right y'all thank you oh actually uh lulux was talking about where is the money coming from let's see i don't know if you can answer that but maybe the happy token has value right but basically there's probably some initial liquidity where you guys lock up some amount of happy token and some amount of eth yeah and just was by equal. doing that that gives it a price yeah it was equal first i mean uh, let's say just it was one happy token was equal to the one ETH, but we, we changed it to like uh, 2000 oh, maybe. Um, I think yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, awesome. Great builds today. Uh, uh, yeah, I think we miss Bert. We owe Bert. We uh, next next week. We Bert goes first. Let's let's try to remember it. <laughs> All right. Happy Friday. Keep building things. Uh, go through the speed run if you haven't yet. Use scaffold ETH too and build things. If you're stuck on anything, or you're looking for your next thing. Reach out. But happy Bowtie Friday. We did it. Thanks, y'all.